Hello, my name is Lily Long and this is Lab 1 with excess charges on ordinary objects. When ordinary objects are electrically charged, they can require an excess charge with a wide range. In this lab, we were able to conclude that the tape material used was positively charged or had an electron deficiency, and there was one lost electron per 3.82 times 10 to the 6 atoms on the sticky side of the tape. During the main part of the experiment, we witnessed tape B levitate due to electric forces on tape A onto tape B. When tape B began levitating, its gravitational force and electric force from tape A canceled out because they are of the same magnitude. By measuring the tape dimensions and using Coulomb's law, one can calculate the excess charge between materials based on their charge and material type. This lab set was rather simple as only four materials were required. Clear tape was used to observe electrical forces, a ruler for measurements and SI units, a flat surface for the base tape for charging, and stackable objects for upholding tape fee in the main part of the experiment. Two fundamental physics principles used for Coulomb's law, which accounts for electric force of point charge 2 onto point charge 1. We use Coulomb's law to calculate the electric force of the point charge later in the experiment. We also use the pen test, which simply recognizes that if you rub or run a plastic pen or glass rod through your hair or other similar materials, it will become negatively charged. With this information, we were able to test and see what charge an electrically charged piece of clear tape would have. It concluded it is positively charged because opposite charges attract to each other, and the tape was attracted to the negatively charged pen when both objects were near each other. The main experiment included loosely hanging tape B between two boxes and holding tape A close to it. Tape B began to levitate away from tape A, like the diagram, when the two pieces of tape were 3.5 centimeters away from each other and remained hovering until tape A was removed. Tape B began to levitate because of our assumption that it had the same electric charge as tape A and because the gravitational force of tape B was the same magnitude but opposite direction of the electric force of tape A on tape B and thus both forces cancel, leaving only the electric forces of tape A on B and tape B on A to repel each other. To calculate the gravitational force of the tape, we use the density of one gram per meter of tape, and to calculate the area of an atom, we use the value one times 10 to the negative 10 meters. Some assumptions that were given were that air resistance is negligible. Both tapes will be addressed as point charges and will have the same charge magnitude, where the charge of tape A is equal to the charge of tape B. Additionally, it is assumed that the charges of the tapes were evenly distributed along their actual lengths, even though in reality the distribution of charges on a tape can vary, and also that the tapes have the same dimensions and surface area. Based on our calculations, the magnitude of the force of gravity on tape B is 1.86 times 10 to the third newtons, and it's equal to its electric force, which is its charge multiplied by its electric field, or Coulomb's law. We can solve for the charge QB because the charge of tape B and tape A are the same, and when we do this, we get 1.6 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs. If we divide the charge by E, or the electric charge of an electron or proton, we find that it's mounts to 9.95 times 10 to the 10 excess electrons. If we take the surface area of either piece of tape, which is 3.8 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared, and divide by the average area of an atom, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 20 meters squared, we can also find that there are 3.83 times 10 to the 17 atoms on the sticky side of either one of our tapes, and that there is one electron for every 3.82 times 10 to the 6 atoms on the pieces of tape. Since the tapes are positively charged, they have a deficiency of electrons. When we run our code in GlowScript, we can display the tapes as spheres to represent point charges and use arrows to represent the vertical forces acting on them. The top blue sphere is tape B and the bottom orange sphere is tape A. Two green arrows represent the electric forces onto each point charge from the other point charge, and the red arrow pointing down represents the gravitational force of tape B. That is the same magnitude of the electric force of tape A on tape B. We only show the gravitational force on tape B to show that it cancels out with the electric force on, of A on B in order to show the electric forces repel one another and allow for tape B to levitate above tape A at a certain distance D, which is 3.5 centimeters. Two important considerations are, if electrons and protons switch charges where protons had negative charges and electrons had positive, the tapes would still behave the same because of the underlying principle that similar charges will, will repel each other, and since they are the same material size and charge the same way, they should have the same magnitude of charge. And two, it's important to try to handle the charged tapes as little as possible because we can act as conductors and accept some of the electrons that have the charged tapes have, which could cause the tapes to become less charged and less reactive to neutral ordering objects we use to test their own electric qualities. 
Overall, this was a simple but important lab that allowed us to observe and understand the behaviors of ordering objects when they become charged and how much of a difference in electrons is produced depending on the material. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.